In this video, Scott OnStart will show you how you can export data like contours from Equator Studio and use it in AutoCAD and Revit to create Topo Solid. Now you can create the elevation data for any region in the world simply by using the Equator Studio maps. By the way, you can try it for free as well. So to follow along this tutorial, check the link in the description of this video and create a free account to get started. So with that, it's over to Scott now. In this video, I'll show you how we can export data from Equator Studios and use it in AutoCAD and Revit. So I'm going to navigate around the globe by dragging, and then I can roll the mouse wheel to zoom, and I can navigate in this kind of intuitive way, or I can go over here to the Search tab and search for a place, an address, or enter latitude and longitude coordinates. So I've located San Francisco all right, but what I'd like to do is explore the area just north of San Francisco over here in Marin County across the Golden Gate Bridge. So just on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge, and you can see the towers in shadow here. Just over here, there's this little settlement, and I'm interested in this ring road here, Seitler Road, and I notice we have some likely building areas right here. So that's the area I have that I'm interested in. So I'm going to zoom in there like you see me doing, and then I'll go ahead and create a new site by clicking right here. This opens up a frame, and we can change the aspect ratio of that frame here in different ways. I'll leave it with the default, just navigate, so I'm kind of seeing these two kind of building paths, and I need to give this a name. I'll just call it Site the Road, for lack of a better name, and press Enter, and that creates the site. And if you drag the right mouse button, you can change your point of view. And you can see now that the, uh, the site boundary is draped over the landscape. And you can click right here on the compass to reorient to north. Now we're on the data tab. And on the data tab, we have access to lots of different data sources. I'm just going to stick with the top one here. And within that, we can go through these different choices. We have point cloud data. SHP files, which are good for AutoCAD Map 3D and Civil 3D. We have DWG, which is good for all flavors of AutoCAD. And this is only available with a paid account. And we have various other formats. 3D surfaces, GeoTIFFs, STL and OBJ, which is good for 3D modeling programs, and some height maps in raster format. So I'm going to go back here, and in this video, I'm going to focus in on the SHP format. And you can take advantage of this format using Civil 3D or AutoCAD Map 3D. And if you're an AutoCAD customer or an AEC collection subscriber, you have access to all the AutoCAD verticals, which includes AutoCAD Map 3D. So I've installed that vertical just for this purpose. I'll click here to add this product to my map. And we go to the next step, which is to select the data set. And you have different choices here. I'll stick with the default, which is USGS 2010. And I'll use detailed so that I have finer resolution down to 0.3 meters per contour or about one foot. I'll click generate and it's processing. You can see a progress bar here. When that's done, it will download the contours and now we can see them. And if I drag the right mouse button, you can see that these contours appear to be just underneath the, the map. They're probably in the most accurate position in the map, I suspect is floating above that slightly. So there's a little bit of a disjoint there, but that's not a problem. Our next step is to click right here to choose the format that we wish to download. And that can be SHP, DXF, or SVG. I'll stick with SHP. And down here, we can choose a different coordinate system. I'm going to go with Custom, and I'll click right here to type it in. And then I can just select from this shortcut menu, WGS84. Now, it has an EPSG code, and I'm going to note that down. It's 32610. I've just noted that down here in this text editor. I'll need that in a minute. I'll say Process, 
and this is when it's actually generating the file for download, and then it downloads. Now I should be able to access that on my hard drive. Here it is. So it brings us a zip file and a readme, and I'm going to go in and extract the zip file. And looking at the file sizes over here, I notice that this is the big file, the SHP file. And that's the only file that I essentially need. I'm just going to erase all the other little files, just leaving the SHP file, the contour file. OK, now I can go over to AutoCAD, Map 3D, create a new drawing, and then go to Insert, Map Import, change the files of type to SHP, locate the contour file, and then here it says no coordinate system assigned. Click this button and then click here. Now I need that code number. Good thing I made a note of it. I can put that in the search field and now we have the precise coordinate system. I'll select it. OK. OK again. And then zoom extents. Z enter, E enter. What we're left with here are polylines. And I'll hold down the shift key and drag the mouse wheel to orbit. And you can see that these have elevations. Each polyline is at a different elevation. And the contour lines are 0.3 meters apart, or about one foot. Let's examine this a little closer. So the building site that I'm interested in is kind of right here on the top, this one here. Just keep that in mind. All right, I'll go to View, Top. And now this is in metric. I'd like to convert it into imperial units so I can use it in North America, in AutoCAD or in Revit. So to do that, we need to do a couple of steps. Step one is scale the data, and step two is change the units. So first, I'm going to type scale, SC, enter, all, enter, enter. I'm going to scale it from 0, 0, enter. And the scale factor is 39.3701, enter. And I'm using that scale factor because that is the number of inches in a meter. You see, AutoCAD uses inches as its default unit. So I can zoom extents again. And now let's just do a little reality check by measuring a distance. I'll type dist, enter. And I'll measure a distance across here. And the distance is 3,463. Those are inches. So to get them to show up in feet and inches, we need to change the units. I'll type UN, enter, and change the unit type to architectural. And then dist across this general width, and that's about 286 feet, which seems reasonable. This contour line is representing sort of where I want to put the building. So I'd like to examine that in greater detail. I'll click on it and then open up the properties palette. And here we can see that its elevation is at 124 feet and some change. So this is the height above sea level. What I really want is for this to be about zero so I can use it in Revit. So what I'd like to do is move everything down 124 feet. So I can do that by using the Move tool. I'll type M, Enter. I'll select All by typing All, Enter, Enter. The base point will be 0, 0, enter. The second point will be 0, 0, comma, minus 124 feet. And the feet symbol is the apostrophe. Enter. And so now, if I click on this contour line and go to the properties, it is only at 3 sixteenths of an inch, which is totally fine. It's about at 0. Great. So I've converted this for use in Revit. I will save this as a DWG file on the desktop, and I will call this uh, Contours Imperial. Save. And now over in Revit, I will create a new project with the Imperial Multidiscipline template. And here in level one, I will go to Insert, Link CAD. I can select my DWG file that I just generated in map 3D. I'll leave origin to internal origin set. I do not want to correct lines that are slightly off axis. I want to leave that unchecked. And I'll also leave current view only unchecked. Say open. 
Let's look in 3D. I'll go to the default 3D view here. And you can see now if I orbit by holding down shift and dragging the mouse wheel, that it's coming in in the right place. There's level one and there's the terrain. Great. Now let's convert this into a topo solid in Revit. You can do that on the massing and site tab. Open up topo solid and say create from import and then click create from CAD and click on the CAD import. And then we only are concerned with the contour layer. So I'll uncheck zero and def points, which are default layers. This is the default layer of all AutoCAD drawings and def points is for dimensions. So we don't need those. The actual data is on the contour layer, evidently. I'll click OK, and it will convert this into a topo solid. It has some issues that we can correct. And it's coincident right now with the CAD import. So we have two things there. I'll go back to Insert, Manage Links, CAD Formats, select the file and unload it. And then I will go ahead and change the visual style to shaded. And I just like to clean up the border here as well as maybe simplify it somewhat. So I'll click on the Topo Solid and say Simplify Topo Solid. And I'd like to keep, let's say, 60% of the points. OK. So it's dramatically simplifying this. And that should kind of smooth it out a little bit, make it a little bit more manageable. Now the border is leave something to be desired. So I'll go to the top view, select the topo solid, and edit the sketch. So there's the border. I'd like to revise that by uh, creating a rectangle within this area, like so. And then I'll go ahead and erase all the other magenta lines going around that. I'm selecting and pressing the delete key and then accept. And some of the vertices were deleted. That's understandable. And now we have a usable topo solid here in Revit. So that's how you can use data from Equator Studio to create contours and create topo solid in Revit. But its use is not limited to just creating contours or topo solids. You can even use this to create STL files for 3D printing and even LiDAR maps, concept maps, sections and profiles. Now, did you like this tool? And do you have questions related to the same? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next one.